Welcome to Colorado Homes and Lifestyles, where style comes home. This recording is brought to you by Aftersight, and it is intended to be used solely by individuals who are blind or have low vision. Thank you for joining us for the Colorado Homes and Lifestyles July-August 2022 Home of the Year edition. My name is Jerry Jingra. From the editor, The Art of the Home. People often ask, what makes a home of the year? We look for homes that delight and surprise us with their graceful lines, architectural charm, and inspiring decor. But perhaps, even more importantly, we seek a magic ingredient that can be hard to define, the homeowner's personality shining through as it does in our 2022 Home of the Year. Terry Garbarini, proprietor of the eponymous Denver fashion boutique Garbarini, poured her design vision into the Denver Hilltop home she shares with her partner, Eddie Turner. Garbarina says although she has lived in homes that she enjoyed, she thought about this home for years, preparing to build it from the ground up, knowing exactly how she wanted it to be. Before we moved in, I often found myself designing rooms in my head around my existing furniture, Garbarini says. Nest Architecture translated her ideas into plans, and Greenwich Builders brought them to life. Garbarini envisioned the home in the international style, black and white simple. Working with the design team at Nest, she filled it with her cache of Art Deco treasures collected over the years along with an amazing art collection. You'll see this stunning home with design that harkens back to glamorous Hollywood days on page 104. Art has a starring role in this issue. We've included an artful living section with homes in Denver, Crested Butte, Aspen, and Boulder. In the words of Susanna Adelson, homeowner of the Aspen residence on page 48, Artwork is a secret language that speaks differently to each viewer. No matter what your taste, whether modern masterpieces or an eclectic mix of artists, we hope you'll find homes in this issue with art that speaks to you. Darla Warden, Editor-in-Chief. Finds. Booked. Crafting the perfect recipe is a joy for Eliza Cross, best-selling cookbook author and recipe developer. Since 2009, Cross has published 15 successful cookbooks, including 101 Things to Do with Bacon, one of Cross's most praised and popular books. Based out of Denver, the Colorado native offers a broad market of well-crafted cookbooks, offering a roadmap to creating the perfect dish. Her recent hardcover, Hot Diggity Dog, Gibbs Smith, April 2022, features 65 accessible recipes focused on how to prepare America's favorite franks and sausages. We met with Cross to discuss her decade-long career as a cookbook author and what inspired her to pursue a career in the printed recipe. First inspiration? My mom is a wonderful cook who wrote a food column for the weekly paper in Boulder. She's always influenced my interest in cooking and writing. Tell us about your latest book. Hot Diggity Dog has 65 recipes featuring bratwurst, hot dogs, and sausages, everything from sandwiches and appetizers to easy meals. These are foods to savor with family and friends, perhaps outside on a glorious Colorado day. Tough question. What is your favorite summer hot dog recipe? I like splitting jumbo franks down the center, stuffing them with pepper jack cheese, wrapping them with partially cooked strips of bacon, and finishing them on the grill. So good. What motivates you to create cookbooks? Cooking for loved ones and sharing a meal together is one of the greatest pleasures in life. That's really why I write cookbooks. Since the pandemic, more people have been cooking at home. Do you have advice for the novice home cook? Learn from food writers who share excellent recipes. Dory Greenspan, Lights Culinaria, and Smitten Kitchen are three favorites. 
Can you share the food trends of 2022? Cooking with smoke and fire. People bought over 14 million grills and smokers during the pandemic. Meat prices are high, so I think we'll see creativity with cheaper cuts like pork shoulder and chicken leg quarters. Speaking of pork, your bacon book was a bestseller. What is it about bacon that creates such a stir? Bacon evokes the comfort of home cooking with its enticing aroma, savory flavor, and versatility as an ingredient. People go bonkers for bacon. Politics may divide us, but bacon enthusiasts are united by a common love. Your first job was a fast food restaurant. How did that experience lead to your current career path? Working as a teen at the original Boulder McDonald's was a high-pressure job that gave me a deep appreciation for what it takes to run an eatery. I briefly considered a dining critic gig, but didn't have the stomach to criticize restaurateurs. My focus is celebrating good food. Fresh Style Artful Living when Susanna and Jim Adelson first spotted their home in Aspen, it was under construction. There was plastic sheeting everywhere. You couldn't even see the front door, Susanna remembers. Unable to envision the finished house, Jim had to trust his wife, an experienced interior designer. But she knew the house was right for them. It spoke to me, she says. Other things spoke to her as well, notably art. The finishes throughout the house, basalt, stone, steel, glass, gave us the perfect backdrop for colorful artwork, Susanna says. The Adelsons worked with New York-based art advisor Christy Bryce. I made sure that each piece of art was museum quality, and Susanna made sure it was perfect for the feeling she was creating in each space, Bryce says. Some of the rooms posed a challenge. In the primary bedroom, for instance, the bed is against a partial height wall. The couple commissioned a piece by Native American artist Jeffrey Gibson. Those circles are actually drums. Gibson infuses his culture into the art, and his use of color is inspirational, Susanna says. Of course, the house itself is a piece of art. Architect Kim Raymond renovated the Victorian miner's cabin facing the street, which is the focal point of the house. She designed an addition that connects to the original home via a light-filled hallway. We made it glass on both sides, almost like you are walking outside. The linking element is a transition into the modern space, Raymond explains. It's like a portal, Susanna adds. The house also features a vertical portal of sorts, a dramatic glass-enclosed staircase. The architect planned this focal point carefully. We look at stairs as art, so we created a folded metal staircase, Raymond says. It looks like one large piece of metal that was folded. It's very sculptural. The Adelsons and their three daughters spent more time at the house during the pandemic because the family worked remotely. Picking different work stations throughout the house, Susanna says, at the end of the day, everyone congregated in the kitchen. It's the central hub where we connect with each other while coming and going. It's easy to find a great work-life play balance in the mountains when a bike trail or hiking path is right outside your door. Susanna worked from her favorite spot, the dining room. On one wall, artwork by Jacob Hashimoto, made of bamboo sticks and kite papers, softens the straight lines of the room. I can lose myself in that piece, she says. Visitors all have their preferred pieces of art. Artwork is a secret language that speaks differently to each viewer, Susanna says. When you're doing an interior space, a lot of time the artwork is the last thing people think about. It's really important to me. It's like the candy, the jewelry. Fresh Style, Artful Living curated in Crested Butte. Overlooking a ski run, this modern mountain abode is filled with natural light and stunning art. When Dallas couple Jennifer and Mike Kishi went looking for a place to escape the hot Texas summers and found a gorgeous plot of land overlooking a ski run at Crested Butte, they knew they needn't look any further. 
A friend introduced us to the area, and we fell in love with the community, says Jennifer. Plus, we couldn't believe the wonderful summer weather. The couple's traditional style primary residence led them to want something new in a second home. We felt like we could take more risks this time around, says Jennifer, so we wanted the vibe to be more moody, dramatic, and modern. They went in search of an architect who could help them achieve a curated mountain modern design, ultimately selecting Andrew Hadley. Local to Crested Butte. He had built a home in the same subdivision, and we adored it, says Jennifer. With Hadley on board, he suggested builder David Gross, and the team broke land. The overall style they wanted to achieve meant highlighting the architectural bones of the house, says trusted Texas interior designer Stacy Steidley of Studio Steidley. Having previously designed the couple's living room in their primary residence, she felt comfortable taking on the project while based hundreds of miles away. They opted for exposed beams and vast picturesque windows, says Steidley. The couple's vision also involved creating different personalities for each room. The art drove all the fabrics and finishes. We began each room by selecting a mix of abstract designs and photography to hang on the walls. Then we would pick the other fabrics and textures to pull the room together. Because summer is the homeowner's main season to enjoy Crested Butte, they place their focus on indoor-outdoor spaces rather than giving attention to more classic areas like a dining room or an office. Most of our entertaining takes place on the porch, so we maximized our space, says Jennifer. Since there wasn't much wiggle room within the 2,500-square-foot home, the choice to cut out unnecessary areas allowed their outdoor spaces to pack a bigger punch. The process was quickly halted due to the pandemic, but that didn't scare Steidley. Patience was key, she explains. Long-distance projects typically call for around four site visits, so we can take a pulse check on things. But because we were building during the pandemic, we had to get creative. Virtually, she designed the entire interior, completely relying on photos. Not only did the pandemic alter the project, but over the course of the four-year build, the couple expanded their family to welcome their now two-year-old child. A lot of our focus changed, says Jennifer. Instead of having a guest bedroom, we chose to go with a bunk room, along with now needing to baby-proof different areas. Luckily, their designer was comfortable making changes. Sometimes it can be more difficult to stay true to the design's original intent without sacrificing quality or look after pivoting, says Steidley. But we took our time making sure everything matched the vision. Fresh style, artful living, mid-century charm. An active businessman finds the perfect Aspen home for work and play. As a proud Colorado native, financial entrepreneur and investor William Trefethen knew Aspen was his ideal setting to lay down roots. Aspen was always one of my favorite places on earth, he says. It was a dream of mine to live there one day. The dream became a reality in 2016 when the father of two adult children bought a townhouse in the Aspen Corps, but he soon realized he wanted more space to comfortably work from home and host casual gatherings. I had always loved Red Butte Drive, and I'm a big fan of mid-century architecture, so I bought a home there. Located on one of Aspen's highly desired streets, the 2,600-square-foot home that Trefethen purchased was in need of a refresh. Built in 1974, the well-appointed space oozed mid-century modern charm. I think most people would have demoed the home for the lot. But I wanted to restore and improve the home, keeping most of the mid-century elements intact, he explains. To update the abode, Trefethen enlisted architect Kurt Carruth of Hinge Architects in Glenwood Springs to draw up concepts. The house had a good feel to it even before the renovation, Carruth recalls. Good natural lighting, and the layout was well done too. It felt bigger than it was. The client wanted an updated feel, not rustic, but definitely mountain modern inspired.
To achieve the mountain mod feel, the remodeling project included renewing cabinets and flooring, replacing exterior surfaces, and updating all finishes. While many mid-century elements were maintained, the popcorn ceilings and orange peel walls were removed. The resulting interior has a warm and cozy vibe thanks to an eye-calming neutral color palette throughout. In the living room, the homeowner's contemporary aesthetic includes the use of metal, wood, leather, and chunky textures, as seen in the rugs, accessories, woven chairs, and reclaimed wood pieces, juxtaposed against marble, glass, and modern. The lines are clean. And overall, it's sophisticated yet very comfortable, interior designer Sherry Engel explains. The primary bedroom mirrors the warm neutrals found elsewhere in the home. The space is anchored by a welcoming wood-burning fireplace that is balanced by an oversized window, providing spectacular mountain views. Sliding glass doors open to an expansive deck overlooking the side yard, running stream and pond. I expanded the decks of the home to bring the outside in, Trefethen says. The home has four decks, each with its unique view of the surrounding mountains and landscape. Trefethen brought with him a museum-worthy collection of art that informed the design decisions. My art collection consists of pieces I have collected over the last 20 years, he explains. It's a collection featuring well-known artists like America Martin, Jane Maxwell, and Mary Finlayson, and many other pieces I have collected from galleries and shows on the East Coast, West Coast, and Mountain West. The charming home is situated on an acre of land, which includes a large grass front yard and private side yard with three running streams and a pond. The home basks in the eloquence of nature, surrounded by towering aspen trees. Steps away are the Roaring Fork River and Rio Grande Trail, providing a serene escape on busy work days. Renovation of the home took 18 months, much during the height of the pandemic. Once complete, the Trefethen is thrilled with the updated retreat that evokes a sense of character and history. I love it here, he says, and I'm glad it's done. Fresh Style Inspired Spaces A top-to-toes remodel by Arcadia Architecture turns a cobbled-together boulder house into a cohesive home. From Eclectic to Electric Story by Allison Gwynn Welcome to the Fun House. That's the perfect description for this remodeled boulder home, which has been totally reinvented from a topsy-turvy house into an indoor-outdoor home that works perfectly for the owner's active entertaining lifestyle. The place has a long, rich history that dates back to the late 1870s when the tiny original house, now the living room, sat amid apple orchards not far from what is now Pearl Street. Since then, the house has undergone multiple renovations and additions, which had resulted in a disjointed, not always functional interior that needed updating. Before, the house was just cobbled together, says homeowner Laurel Brozovich. The two kids' bedrooms were on the main floor. There was an awkwardly placed, rarely used front door. The kitchen was tight, and there was a not-so-private full bath sitting right next to it. We just wanted a normal layout she says. But, adds her husband Mark Safirian, we also wanted to maintain the integrity of the older house. So the couple turned to Boulder's Arcadia architecture to work its magic. The design challenge was to bring everything up to current standards, to add significantly more space, and to simplify the parts into a unified composition while still maintaining the home's somewhat eclectic charm, says architect David Beek, principal at Arcadia. The result is that virtually every room, as well as the outdoor space, was changed. Arcadia enlarged the interior, moved all the family bedrooms to the second floor, expanded the kitchen, added a powder room and mudroom to the main floor, and dug out a new partial basement, which contains a guest bedroom, bath, kitchenette, and movie room. And they turned the outside into a true extension of the house, adding a covered back porch with a frosted glass roof and an outdoor kitchen 
kitchen, a hot tub space, and a large trellised outdoor room with Tivoli lights and a fireplace, as well as a third-level deck with views of both the mountains and the historic Whittier School Bell Tower a block away. Now, the homeowners who love nothing more than hosting friends can host indoor-outdoor parties practically year-round. I love to cook and entertain, says Severian, and it really is an entertainer's home. We've created nine or so amazing spaces where two to eight people can sit and feel like they're in a different space every time. And everywhere you look, there is fun. A main floor speakeasy room is hidden, accessible only by pulling on a lever disguised as a gnome. On the third floor, accessible via spiral staircase, is a glassed-in meditation room. Beneath the mudroom floor, you'll find a wine cellar, accessible via hydraulic lift. And walk across the new outdoor room and you'll reach a pre-existing carriage house, which includes Safarian's office and a loft that has been converted into a yoga studio. Mark and Laurel are very into their friends, says longtime pal Andrea Georgopoulos, owner of ACG Interiors in Vail, who consulted on the home's interior design. They're all about entertaining and having people over. If it's a big group, they have all this space to entertain, but they also have these cozy little neighborhoods within the space for smaller groups. It's a house for entertaining, for sure. Fresh Style Style maker Stephanie Jones Denver-based British television show personality, fashion and beauty columnist, and executive producer and host of Steph and T podcast shares her favorite things. 1. Hair Salon They say your hair is your crowning glory and I couldn't agree more. I won't let anyone other than Lindsay, founder and master stylist at L.B. Savvy, touch my locks. She gives me a full head of extensions that you'd truly believe were my own, and her color work is perfection. 5056 Federal Boulevard, Denver, lbsavvy.com 2. Colorado Artist When I first discovered Maddie Berglund's work, I was totally captivated. The Oslo-born artist now lives in Denver, and I'm a big fan of her oil-on-canvas, Elizabethan portrait-style work. She creates paintings of mysterious beauties wearing intricate garments that have a modern contemporary flair. Totally unique and quirky. MaddieMade.com 3. Workout Venue. My boyfriend and I work out with Sarah Fox every week at her Cherry Creek North personal training space, the studio. If there's anyone who can get me up and out of bed at 6 a.m., it's Sarah. She certainly puts us through our paces. 2628 East 3rd Avenue, Denver, the studio cc.com. 4. Art Gallery. Located in downtown Aspen, Eden Gallery is a contemporary art lover's dream. I swoon over their impeccable displays filled with work by their global artists, including a favorite of mine, the incredibly talented Angelo Accardi. 534 East Cooper Avenue, Aspen. Eden-Gallery.com. 5. Skin Care. The change in climate when moving from the UK to Colorado really took its toll on my skin, and I developed adult acne. I visited Dr. Jack Zamora and his team for his infinite InfiniVeeb MD Facial, a next-level beautification stem cell facial. It has completely changed my tone and texture. 36 Steel Street, Denver, JackZanoraMD.com. 6. Household Appliances. Being British, having a kettle is one of the most important appliances in the home. I need my tea boiling hot. Smeg Electric Kettle, $189.98. William Sonoma, williamsonoma.com. 7. Arts Venue. An ideal night out for me is an evening at the Denver Center for the Performing Arts. When the theater reopened post-COVID, I went to see The Lion King and literally cried at the opening scene. I recently saw the Colorado Symphony Orchestra perform A Night of Queen, but seeing Hamilton in March was the true highlight. 8. Active Apparel 
Ogler is a Swiss fashion house with one location in Aspen and another opening in Vail this summer. I first went there for their ultra sleek ski wear, but I quickly became a fan of the ready to wear collections. I live in the Zibellino cashmere coat in navy, $5,900. Perfect to elevate any uh, outfit, any time of year. USOgler-OG.com. 9. Home Design Store. Upon every visit to Watson & Company, I find the most unusual trinkets, antique designer homewares, taxidermy, and art deco must-haves. This article will be incomplete due to time constraints. Thank you for joining us for the Colorado Homes and Lifestyles, July-August 2022 issue. My name is Jerry Jangra. <music> You've been listening to Colorado Homes and Lifestyles, where style comes home. If you enjoyed this program, please register for our free services at www.aftersight.org or by calling 303-786-7777.